Hello, today we are going to do a fun and easy neon sign animation using the Procreate app. And if you have never used animation in Procreate, no worries, I am here to talk you through every step of the way. I am Kelly Brenberg. I am a member of the Pigeon Letters design team, and I will be sharing new tutorials with you every month on the Pigeon Letters. Let's get started. We're actually going to do two variations of the same animation, so you'll have two different results. And the first animation I would consider really, really, really easy. And the second animation I would consider pretty easy. So we'll get started with the really easy animation and then move on to the next one. So for the first easy, really, really easy animation, we're going to do something like this. This is a marquee kind of animation and it has text in the middle. You can write whatever you want and the colors are just blinking here from one color to the next. And then we're going to use what we did on that animation to create a new one. And the new one will be like this, where the colors seem to be kind of chasing each other around the perimeter of the animation. Let's get started, and we're going to create a new canvas. You can create a canvas any size that you would like. I generally start with a square because I like to share my work on Instagram. So I'm going to hit plus here, this little rectangle. I'm going to start with a square that's 3000 by 3000 pixels. Procreate will generally default to the display P3 color profile. That color profile has the most colors available. So I generally like using that. The exception is with animations where I'll use an sRGB color profile. And I choose that because it has a reduced amount of colors. And when you're exporting an animation on Procreate, it will reduce the amount of colors to an sRGB color palette. So if you don't want to be surprised by your colors when you're exporting, start with an sRGB color palette for animations. Let's tap Create and we will keep going. The color palette that I'm using today has a really dark midnight blue, a cream, a kind of rosy salmon color, and this bright orange. And I'm going to start with this dark color and we're going to create a rectangle. And Procreate will help us create a perfect rectangle with this little trick. I'm going to tap on the selection ribbon and this toolbar pops up at the bottom. I'm going to make sure rectangle is selected and I'm going to draw a rectangle on my screen. Because the dark blue is selected, it automatically fills that. If it wasn't automatically filled, then you could color fill. You could just drag the color over like you usually would with the dot. The next thing I'm going to do with my rectangle is get it exactly how I want it. So I'm going to tap on this little arrow up here and I'm going to go to free form so that way I can make the rectangle wider or taller or shorter, however I want it. This one looks pretty good right here so I'm going to go with it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is center my rectangle and Procreate again will make that easy. When you get these gold bars in the center, you'll know that it's right in the middle. So the next thing we're going to do is make a message on our neon sign. You could use this on social media in a variety of ways, like if you had big news or an announcement or a new class or a new blog. You could change the text on your neon sign to reflect whatever you wanted it to say. Procreate comes with a lot of fonts available, and you can also download any fonts that you would like to procreate. For this animation, I'm using a free Google font called Quicksand, and let me show how you would get that. All you need to do is type in Google Fonts to Google. You can even misspell fonts like I did, and it'll pop right up. And you can browse the different fonts available. These are all free. And you can tap on them and see all of the different things available. This one goes from extra light to black. But the one I'm using is called Quicksand. And so I'm just going to type in Quicksand here. And it pops right up. And if you wanted to download this font, you could tap Download Family and it will be downloaded to your iPad. So 
Um, check out Google Fonts if you're looking for some free fonts that you can use. As far as the license, it will say things like you can use them freely in your products and projects. The only stipulation seems to be that you can't sell the fonts on your own. Okay, so let's go back to Procreate and I'll show you how I'm going to add the text. I'm going to go to Wrench, Add Text. And because I have this dark color selected, that's what's popping up, I'm gonna change it to the cream. I'm gonna move it down to the marquee sign. I'm gonna hit edit text. I'm gonna double tap on that so it's all selected. And I'm gonna tap on this Ina, which is the font that Procreate will default to. And I'm gonna scroll down to Quicksand, which I have already downloaded onto Procreate. If you like to hand letter, you can do that too. Here is Quicksand, and I'm going to go with a bold version of Quicksand, and I'm going to type big news. I want this all to be caps, so if I have it selected and I go tap on the AA there, I can toggle this TT thing on and it'll make it all caps. So I'm just going to center this on the page. I'm gonna make sure that there's room for my border of dots along here. So that looks good. If you want to have kind of a neon effect, you could add a Gaussian blur to your text and I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna to swipe to the left, hit duplicate. I'm gonna tap on my bottom layer. I'm gonna to move to this magic wand, tap on Gaussian blur, tap on layer, and then you'll see this thing at the top, Gaussian Blur Slide to Adjust. So I'm gonna use my pencil and that will create, a, that will change the percentage of the Gaussian Blur from like very blurry as you can see to, I think I want it just like about 3%, just a subtle um, blur. And sometimes it's hard to see the effect that you're getting with the Gaussian Blur and you don't really know until you turn it off and turn it back on again. Um, so that's pretty subtle, but it does give us a little kind of neon-y effect. Okay, so these three layers are going to be the background of our animation. So I'm going to tap group and I'm going to rename this background. <laughs> um, Procreate doesn't often understand what I'm scribbling in this little box, but this time it did. Um, now we're gonna add another layer above the background and we're gonna start creating our dots. And to do that, we are going to use Procreate's drawing guide to help us out. To turn that on, we're gonna go to Wrench, Canvas, toggle the drawing guide on, and then hit Edit Drawing Guide. As you can see, my drawing guide here is a dark color, so it doesn't show up very well on my dark sign. So I'm going to change the color to start to a light color. You can also change the opacity and I'm going to bring up the opacity and thickness just so it's really easy for us to see here. You can also change the grid size and what I want is a grid that will help me draw a straight line of dots kind of where I want it. So I'm going to bring this up to it's at 118 and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit done and we're gonna go back to our canvas. I'm gonna grab this bright orange color and I'm gonna grab the mono pigeon brush from the Pigeon Letters brush lettering set. And I'm gonna use this brush as a stamp to create a dot that then we'll be duplicating as it goes along. Now that's kind of messy, those dots, but I'll have, I'll show you a trick for getting them exactly right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a dot. Right now my brush is at um, 80, almost 80%. That's a little big. I'm gonna bring it down 70%. I like that. So we have our one dot here. And what I wanna do is use these grids where the lines intersect to make my dot perfectly lined up. And I think that looks good. And what we're gonna do then is duplicate this dot, take the second dot, bring it over. So again, it's right where those lines intersect. 
I'm going to merge those two layers together. I'm going to hit duplicate again and then bring them over like that. And we're just going to keep going like that. So duplicate, move the new layer over, line it up. And it starts slow, but then it starts like multiplying like bunnies. If you want to move something really subtly on Procreate, you can just tap in the direction that you want it moved like that. Um, if you wanted to move it down, then you would tap it in that direction. If you'd want it in this direction, you'd tap it that way. So I'm going to just tap this over so it's centered, and that looks good. Again, we're going to duplicate our layers by pinching them together. Choose duplicate, grab our arrow, move it over. Tap it into place. Merge them. Duplicate. And this one's going to be too long, but that's okay. We'll just erase what we don't need. That looks good. We're going to merge those together. I'm going to grab my eraser. Um, if you are using a certain pen and you want to erase with the same brush, simply hold down on the eraser and then the eraser will become the same as the brush. So in this case, again, the Mono Pigeon brush from Pigeon Letters. So I am going to erase these two dots right here. That looks good. I am going to duplicate once again and bring the bottom layer down and line it up here. I'm going to again tap it into place. That looks good. I am going to duplicate one of the horizontal rows of dots again. And I'm going to go to this arrow and I'm going to tap on the bottom tool bar, rotate 45 degrees, and I'm going to do that twice. So that will create the little side that will create the vertical row of dots. Um, I am going to erase the ones we don't want. And then I'm going to duplicate our vertical row of dots, choose the arrow, and bring it over so we can finish our frame of dots. I'm going to tap it into place here. I think that looks pretty good. OK, great. So we have all of our dots. I'm going to pinch them all together and merge them. I am going to turn off the drawing guide because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to go to Wrench, Drawing Guide, and toggle that off. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on Animation Assist. And that's right there above the drawing guide. So there, Animation Assist is on. And once you turn on Animation Assist, you get this new toolbar at the bottom. These are considered frames on Procreate, and the frames correspond exactly to the layers on Procreate. You're probably familiar with these layers. So each frame is either a layer or it's a group. And what I'm going to do is toggle that on as the background. That way, the things in the background will be holding steady while the dots that are above the background will be moving. And if that doesn't make sense right now, no worries. I'll talk you through it. We'll just do it together. OK, so we have our orange dots, and we're going to duplicate those twice. And then we're going to change the colors so some of the dots are different colors. So let's do cream as our first layer. Let's hit alpha lock so we can change the colors easily. Once it's alpha locked, you get this checkerboard thing. And I'm going to hit fill layer. So now we have our top dots that are cream. I'm going to navigate to the middle layer. I'm going to do alpha lock. And I'm going to have those be our pink color. So I'm going to fill the layer with the pink. I'm going to alpha lock the bottom because we're going to need that later. I'm also going to name these layers. 
it's not necessary for this animation, but we're going to be using this animation to create the new animation. So it'll be helpful later. So let's just do it right now. So this top layer is cream. This middle layer is pink. This bottom layer is orange. Okay, good. Believe it or not, we are ready to play our first animation. So I'm gonna look down at this uh, toolbar at the bottom. I'm gonna hit play, and now we have these blinking colors around our um, sign. And that's going a little bit fast, so let me show you how to change that. I'm gonna go to settings, and I'm gonna bring the frames for, per second down so it's slower. And as you're changing this, you can see that it's changed, whoa. It's changing the speed as you're going along. And this is a loop animation, which is what most animations are. A loop animation will go from beginning to end and over and over again. You can see it here at the bottom. It's going from beginning to end and then going back to the beginning again. A ping pong animation, you can see it change here. It goes from beginning to end and then backwards. So it's going back and forth, back and forth. And I think these neon sign animations look better as a ping pong. I'm gonna bring the speed down a little bit. It's at three, let's try two. I think that looks good. It's a matter of preference. Um, the other kind of animation is a one shot and a one shot animation is pretty boring. It's like a one and done. Let me show you, I'll hit play. It goes through the animation just once and then it's over. So that is not much fun and I don't use it very often. Okay, so we have done our first animation, our really easy animation, and I hope you did find it really easy, and we are moving into our next one, which is pretty easy. And to make it easier, let's duplicate this animation. I'm gonna to go to my gallery. I'm going to swipe to the left. I'm going to choose duplicate. And I'm gonna open the new one. And what we're gonna do here let me just show you real quick again what we're gonna do. Our animation is gonna end up looking like this one where there's three different colors and they keep changing. So let's go back and do that. We're gonna group those three colors together into a group. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be erasing away the dots to reveal the dots underneath it. So the first dots are cream and then they're pink and then they're orange. Okay, so I'm on the cream layer. I have my mono pigeon eraser. I want the first dot to be cream and the second two dots to be other colors. So I'm erasing away two dots after the cream. So the pattern is one cream dot, two pink for now. And what we're gonna do after that is erase away the pink so we can see the orange below for one of the dots. But in the meantime, we are just going around the whole circle like this. One cream dot, two pink dots. Okay, so now if we turn off the other layers, you can see what this looks like here. We have our cream dots. I can also see that I didn't erase everything away perfectly. So I will fix that here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the other layers back on. We're gonna navigate down to our pink layer, and now we're gonna be erasing away the third dot after the cream. So we're on the pink layer, I have my eraser, I have my cream dot, my pink dot, and if I erase away my second pink dot, it reveals the orange dots below. And we're just gonna keep going in the same fashion, erasing away the dot that is right be before the cream dot.
so here we have two cream dots in a row and I don't really like that. So I'm gonna undo that erase. How can I fix this? What if I just made this one orange? It doesn't really matter, but that's fine. I just don't want the same colored dots next to each other. Okay, so now that we have this, what we're gonna do is duplicate this group twice and we're just gonna be changing the colors of the dots that we already have in the same order. So in this original group, orange was at the bottom and cream was next. So in this one, orange will be at the top. We'll do C for cream. So now this bottom layer will be P for pink. And then what we're gonna be doing is changing these colors with color fill. It's already on alpha lock, so it will change the colors. So for the orange layer, we are gonna make it orange, color fill, cream, fill layer, pink, fill layer. And then we're gonna do the same here, and we are almost done with this animation. Since we ended with pink for this one, we're gonna start with pink for this one. So I'm gonna change this to P and then O for orange. And then C for cream. And then again, we're gonna change the colors. So color fill this pink. Color fill this orange and then color fill this cream. and our animation is done. So let's hit play and see how it looks. And, oh, it's still on um, one shot. <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna bring my onion skin frames to none. I'll bring up the speed and make it a ping pong animation. So let's hit play. That looks great. Um, so with the ping pong animation, again, our frames are going from the beginning to the end and then back to the beginning again and just looping that way over and over again. If we wanted to export our animation, we would go to Wrench, Canvas, Share, and choose Animated GIF, and then we would export it. I generally will save them right to my camera roll um, if you wanted to use this on top of like another image or something, you could untick the background color here and then it would have a transparent background so you could plop it on top of another image or whatever you wanted. You would save it the same way as an animated GIF and then export. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I have a lot of fun with this neon sign effect and you can use this in a lot of different ways. Let me go into my gallery and I'll show you some different examples. I have done the same kind of techniques with a swipe up arrow. That's something that you could use in Instagram stories again. I've used the little neon dots on top of words like this. And again, it's the exact same technique where you have the dots and you're just changing the colors. And you can see that in the different layers here. You can play around with the different colors. I generally like a dark background for my marquee sign. But again, yeah, this is the exact same technique as the other one. If you create something, please share it on Instagram and tag me, Kelly Brent Burke. I'd love to see what you create. If you would like to learn more about animation on Procreate, I have four Skillshare classes and they're all about creating fun and easy animations using the Procreate app. I'll also be back with another tutorial next month on the Pigeon Letters, so I will see you soon. Thank you.